Originally published in 1995, Trials of Mana is an interesting game to get a remake since the original Super NES title wasn't released outside of Japan until last year's Collection of Mana. It's a classic lost to the logistics of localization, and now it's back for new audiences to discover. While this remake doesn't have anywhere near the same production values of Final Fantasy VII, it smooths out some of the original's blemishes while retaining its intriguing design. Perhaps one of its greatest strengths is just how replayable Trials of Mana is. There are six heroes you can play as, but you can only pick one lead character and two companions per journey. Three different factions of villains oppose you, and your choice of hero determines which one you'll see the most of. You also start the game in different locations and even see towns and dungeons that aren't accessible on different paths. Of course, many of the key plot points remain the same no matter what, but it's fascinating to see how different pieces fit together with subtle shifts and details. When you meet new companions, you're able to play through their prologues as well, but you also bump into other heroes who aren't in your party. This gives you brief glimpses of how their storylines play out when they aren't in the starring role, and whets your appetite to learn more. Depending on your party composition, a different hero may help you break out of prison. And if Duran's not one of your party members, he literally misses the boat to go on the adventure with you. The other big piece of the puzzle is the game's branching class system. Starting from a character's base archetype like swordsman, magician, or cleric, you can eventually choose between one of two paths for their second class, and from there, choose again for their third class. This gives you four possible builds per character, each with different proficiencies, spells, and attacks. Going down this rabbit hole is fun in itself, and you also need to think about how characters interact, considering whether you want any characters to advance in classes that offer support or healing spells. In terms of presentation, the remake leaves mixed impressions overall. It's great to be able to experience this world in a more immersive 3D space, and the art direction really amplifies the characters, feeling true to the lighthearted tone of the series. However, on a technical level, it often feels outdated. Models that make up the environment feel rough with blurry textures, pop-in is prevalent, and there are a lot of loading screens to endure throughout. The voice acting is all over the place, typically decent enough, but often coming across with stilted or awkward pacing. The decision to have Kevin speak in fragmented sentences while Charlotte employs baby talk can make it really hard to get attached to characters who otherwise have a lot going for them. But I got a really, really bad feeling about it. In terms of music, the score essentially leaves the wonderful original compositions intact, delivering the same vibes with new higher quality recordings. However, if you prefer the original 16-bit versions, there's an option to toggle between them at any time. It's a step up from the Secret of Mana remake, but it's still slightly disappointing to have such a limited effort when the original game pushed the audio-visual boundaries for its time. As you travel the world to enlist the help of elemental spirits and protect the Tree of Mana, the game does retread ground here and there, but it really feels like going on a grand adventure, with tons of locations and new ways to travel that open up as you progress. The world design of the remake follows the same beats of the original, with the same locations on the same map, but it's not a one-to-one -one recreation. Dungeon and field layouts are less confusing, with markers that clearly guide you to the next goals. The mazes of the original were also notably empty in terms of rewards, and now there are chests and items all over the place. There's also a character from later Mana games named Lil Cactus, who now rewards you with different perks if you find its hiding spots. While some hope that this remake might bump multiplayer support up from two players to three for the full party, unfortunately, it's an entirely single-player affair. Making matters stranger is that companions stop walking alongside you when you go into towns. Instead, you find them standing around randomly like a regular NPC. It's an odd decision that doesn't add up since it's often implied that your companions are always with you. Battles still play out in real time, but basic combat has gotten an overhaul. Each character has light and strong attacks, a charge attack to break shields, the ability to dodge, and a few simple combos with new ones unlocking when you change classes. Class strikes return, allowing you to initiate flashy moves unique to each class, but rather than the class strike gauge simply increasing when you land hits, you have to pick up glowing orbs that pop out like you're hitting a pinata, which feels unnecessary. 
You can freely swap between party members, making it easy to focus on fighting with whoever has the most energy built up, and every character has a signature style that feels fun and distinct. The first 10 or so hours can be quite easy. Most enemies don't put up much of a fight, and there's an abundance of pots and save points to recover health. However, once you reach Class 2 and your characters have more options in combat, enemies likewise get tougher and require more diverse tactics. You have to dodge more, pay close attention to elemental weaknesses, and watch out for debilitating status effects, like getting turned to stone. While the game provides shortcut keys to quickly take advantage of your most used items and spells, by the midway point, the more tactical play favors taking advantage of the traditional ring menus to pause time, heal in desperate situations, buff defenses, and sort out the most effective strategies. While the remake is far less punishing than the original, there are a few bosses that are simply frustrating to get through. Area of effect markers typically signal when to get out of the way, but some encounters have so much going on in such small arenas that it's hard to follow what's going to happen next. AI partners get decimated in these situations, leaving you frantically healing and reviving characters that were in good health moments ago. Thankfully though, this is only true for a minority of the game's many bosses, and there are several that push you in more satisfying ways. The way you level up similarly mixes in new ideas. Gaining new levels still rewards you with training points to raise certain stats, but now there's a more overt list of benefits shown, so you know what you're working towards. Among these are special abilities you can equip for various buffs. Since there's a limited number of slots, choosing which abilities to equip can make a big difference in your strengths and weaknesses. There are also chain abilities that can be equipped by any party member, and you even learn specific chain abilities from meeting new characters along the way. The new system works well overall, but one issue is that spellcasters like Angela now have their elemental spells spread out across the whole skill tree. So you now have to raise strength to get fireball, raise luck for thunderstorm, and so on. Not only is it a departure from the original progression, but it doesn't make much sense in general since you'd want to pour most of a magician's training points into intelligence, rather than spreading them thin to unlock all the spells they need. Trials of Mana features a number of quality of life improvements from better maps to customizable controls, but the most needed comes with modernizing the shop system, making it easy to identify new gear, equip items, and sell off old wares without leaving the shop interface at all. One of the more confounding issues that remains is that changing to Class 3 requires special items that you can only get by planting rare seeds, which yield surprise results, essentially acting like loot boxes. Things are improved a little by the fact that a handful of these seeds can now be found in specific treasure chests, so you don't have to grind as much. However, the random results mean that you may still need to hunt down a few if the dice rolls don't get you the items you need. A first run through the main story can take about 30 to 35 hours. There's also a new post-game section that can take an additional 4 to 5 hours to complete, but it feels blatantly tacked on, with a story that's awkwardly centered on reaching the newly introduced Class 4. I didn't know I could change to a fourth class. The level four classes themselves are powerful, but feel like a step back as they largely merge elements from the previous two class three options. Meanwhile, the extra mega dungeon definitely feels like it might never end, but since the combat remains engaging, it's still fun to go through and really beef up your characters before saying goodbye. As mentioned earlier, there's a lot of natural incentive to replay Trials of Mana, and New Game Plus only makes it easier to experience an alternate series of events. Your inventory, cash, and abilities all carry over, and there's an optional way to boost XP, gaining levels ridiculously fast. With its crisscrossing alternate storylines and the various possibilities of its branching class system, Trials of Mana is an interesting game to experiment with. There are some elements of this remix production that are worth griping about, but at the same time, it unquestionably improves on some of the more convoluted aspects of the original. What's key is that whether you're brawling with Kevin or casting spells with Angela, battles feel fun and active. Trials of Mana is not only worth giving a shot, but also worth coming back to for a second or third run as well. Easy 
Allies reviews are made possible by generous viewers just like you. If you like what you see, check out patreon.com slash easyallies to help us make more. For just $1 a month, you can gain access to weekly updates, spoiler discussions, and exclusive shows. Thank you.